This is Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast. David Hooper with you. This is the podcast about growing your podcast, marketing your podcast, making a message that people care about, delivering it in a way that people care about, and making an impact because of it. Bigpodcast.com is the website. And on this episode, I'm taking you behind the scenes with some uh, mm, correspondence, we'll call it, with a publicist. People question me about this all the time. What is this like? How do you work a publicist? What happens if you have an opportunity for a big guest, but you're not really into it or they're asking too much? And it's about negotiation. And I'm going to give you the behind the scenes process of what a pitch looks like and what happens when you're maybe not into it, but you're kind of into it because you see potential. I'm one of these guys that see potential. I mean, you can come to me with basically anything. I'm thinking, oh, that's a story. There's a story there. And that can kind of get you in trouble sometimes because what ends up happening is that publicists, they're looking for easy wins and you don't want to be on the sucker list. You might've experienced this with some booking agencies, meaning they book guests for podcasts exclusively. And I'm not going to pick on any one of them. All of them are this way because it's a smart way for them to do it. But if you're somebody that says yes to guest and every single person that they pitch, you say yes to, they're going to come back to you time and time and time again. And they're either going to not have to work as hard because you're saying yes to everything or not only not have to work as hard because you say yes to everything, dump some stuff that other people said no to. There are a lot of people that they cannot book because they're simply not that great. But... These companies take them on because they're paying money and, you know, got to pay the bills. And look, I get it. I get it. I'm not making judgment on that. What I'm saying is you don't want to be left holding the bag and bringing your listeners into their mess, into their deal they signed on for that maybe they shouldn't have. So we're going to talk about that on this episode, the behind the scenes of working with a publicist, booking agent, anybody who's coming to you with a guest idea that maybe isn't a match, but you want to maybe make it a match or you want to say no. This episode is brought to you by Riverside.fm, the leading platform to record studio quality, remote podcast and video. We're going remote, baby. People are working from home, COVID, flu, all sorts of other diseases going on, being in a small room, not like it used to be. But thankfully, there's Riverside. It's used by over 70,000 people and companies, ranging from individual creators to well-known hosts like Guy Raz, Gary Vee, companies like Spotify, the New York Times. One of the things we're getting into when I start talking about this pitch It is a remote session that we're working on. She wanted to do it locally in our studio when this guy was in town. She had a tight timeline. I'm going to get more into it. For now, let's make sure that we get you hooked up with a great remote recording option. And that is Riverside.fm. Here's the deal. Go to Riverside.fm right now. You're going to get two hours to try it out free. Use it on the next interview, the next couple of interviews. You can do this. Two hours should be more than enough for you to get a couple of great interviews. Use Riverside. See if you like it. See how good you sound. When you do decide that you like it, how easy it is for you to do interviews, how easy it is for you to make your guests sound great, I got a coupon code for you. And that coupon code, big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T, riverside.fm, the coupon code, big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. You're going to save 15% on a platform that's already considered one of the most inexpensive ways to do remote recording. Riverside.fm. The code for 15% off, big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. So let me give you the scoop about my relationship with this publicist. I deal with a lot of publicists because I have a show that is a 100% interview format show, meaning every single episode, there is an interview. It is popular enough that people want to be on it. I do not have to go out and get many guests if I don't want to. I do want to because I like to have control of my own podcast. Even though I got people coming to me, I don't want them in charge of the show. They're not in charge of the show. I'm in charge of the show, just like you're in charge of your show. And it is up to us to bring good guests in. However, if they're going to bring a good guest my way, and they have, and this is one of them, there's nothing wrong with dealing with a publicist, taking publicist calls, taking publicist emails. The issue is, is that you need to do things your way. I think it's very easy for podcasters when a publicist or an agent comes to them and they've got a big guest. On the Riverside ad, for example, I mentioned Gary Vee. A lot of people, oh man, Gary Vee, by God. (laughs) They love him. And they would say yes to anything that he's going to do. 
I know a lot of people, and Gary Vee's done interviews with him. He's on a speakerphone. He's in a subway. He's in a taxi. I mean, the dude books himself like crazy. He is not always in the studio like he's going to be when he's recording his podcast. If you want Gary Vee, that's what you get. Me personally, mm mm. No, when you're on my podcast, when you're on my radio show, you're going to be in a quiet place. You're going to have a good mic. You're going to give me the time that I need for the radio show that I'm going to share you the pitch for. I need two hours because I need to get 54 minutes of content. There's 54 minutes of content and six minutes for the commercials. It's a one hour show. And I cannot do it if I've got the guest for less than 90 minutes. I really need two hours because there's sometimes some technical things that we've got to work out. There are things that come up. We need promos. Anyway, I need what I need when I book a guest. And you do too. It's just the difference between me and hopefully not you, but definitely some people is that I ask for what I need. There are a handful of people that I would interview where they did not give me exactly what I need. And this guest in this pitch that I'm talking about, not one of them. If the publicist came to me and said, hey, Dolly Parton wants to get on a tin can and a string and talk to you for 10 minutes, I'd be like, hell yeah. Sign me up. I'll do that. But I'm not going to do it before asking, hey, does Dolly maybe have a phone or a microphone around? I mean, she's a singer. She's got a microphone that we can connect to a computer and connect that way, right? (laughs) Some people just try to get what they can get. And that's what this episode is about. So let's get to it. This is from a publicist I know. She's in Los Angeles. And she says this. This is an email. Hey, Dave, how are you? I hope this finds you well. I wanted to reach out to you about a children's book. And she's got the title of the book. I'm not going to read it here. This is from a first-time author, a music executive, and she gives me his name. It's coming out November 15th on Simon & Schuster with an accompanying eponymous theme song written by hit songwriter and icon, and then she lists the icon's name with illustrations from a first-time published illustrator. She lists the illustrator's name. I know this is a little left to center, not straight-ahead music industry, but it's a beautiful creative collaboration among music creative and, more importantly, Induces so many smiles, I was hoping to get this collaboration and story on your radar to see if you're interested in having blank on the show, the original guy, the author. A link to the music, the book, and more information on the collaboration and how the project came to be is below. I'm happy to send you a copy of the book. Thanks so much for giving this story your attention, Dave. I really appreciate it and look forward to hearing from you. Not the pitch I would normally get, sort of related. Maybe you can connect on this. Sometimes you've got somebody come in who's maybe not 100% match, but, you know, maybe you've got a stock market podcast, for example, and it's an average guy who made money with a stock market, not a trader. Just happened to do three trades in his life, make a bajillion dollars. Is that a story? Yeah, maybe, maybe, but it's not the technical analysis that you normally do. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you get stories like that. And certainly this could be one of these things for me. I'm going to read this guy's bio for you in a second. But sometimes I'll have people that come into a music business show with other creative projects, such as maybe they're a public speaker, maybe they're a writer, a comic, they've got a book. There are parallels between creating those kind of projects and doing those kind of performances to the music industry. And this is one of the things that makes me such a great host, such a great producer, is that I can see those parallels and think, there is a story here, there is a thread that we are going to weave in and out of this from the very beginning of it to the end and make it something that our audience who is listening to us for the music industry is still going to get some music industry advice from, even though we're not going to talk directly about the music industry. Every guest, I believe, has that opportunity. So let's see how this works. So this is the guest that she is pitching. And this is more on the project. He was first inspired to write a story 12 years ago when he married his wife. And it's an intercultural relationship. Shortly after their wedding that brought together all these different cultures, he was in Lake Tahoe. He saw a hummingbird feeding on a flower. Next to it was a bunch of bees. He thought to himself how incredible it was that these two very different creatures were enjoying nature together in harmony. Observing this scene, he decided to develop the story and then talks about two animals coming together. He put pen to paper. During the pandemic, he wrote the story when he was sick with COVID-19 and quarantined from his family. And a side note, that's a story right there for the music industry because there are a lot of people that were taken off the road. There are a lot of creative projects that happened because people were sidelined, they were sick, or they just couldn't go anywhere. But here's what is really interesting. This isn't just a children's author. This is a guy from a major label. He implemented marketing plans for their hip-hop roster before moving to another major label 
And here's who he has done campaigns for. The Beatles, Frank Sinatra, Jimi Hendrix, The Beach Boys, Tina Turner, Pink Floyd, George Clinton, Q-Tip, Ice Cube, Busta Rhymes, Old Dirty Bastard, Digital Underground. It goes on and on and on. He has had a long career. That is something that my audience is interested in. But she pitched me on the book. She didn't pitch me on his career. So I went back to her and I said, look, this book sounds great. I love the idea of bringing different cultures together. And I think it's a good story. I think we can talk about it, but I can't talk about it for an hour. What I want to do, got this 54 minutes that I need to fill. The 54 minutes, by the way, it's divided into four segments. I want to talk to him during the first three segments about his career, all these bands, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix, the Beatles, working marketing campaigns for them. Then I can transition into other creative projects, including his book, throw that in there in the fourth section. She said, great. I said, all right, let me run it by the producer. I'll see if he's in. Run it by the producer. He's in. Get back to her. Here's our schedule. You got to release this about two weeks away. I cannot get you in. I cannot get you edited. I cannot get you aired in that time. In fact, I'm not going to be able to get you in until about a month. And it's going to be about a month after that. So six weeks, two months after your launch that we can actually get this aired. And I also said, speaking of Riverside and remote interviews, this thing's got to be 100% remote. Due to the travel schedule of my engineer, my producer, I might be the only one in Nashville to do this. And I need them, so we're just going to do everything remote. This guy's in Los Angeles, I think. Maybe New York. Publicist is in LA. Anyway, she comes back. Hey, he's actually in town this week. Could you get him in Wednesday to Friday? No, we can't. I've already told you. I can't book him for a month. We book out. I've got to get the studio. I've got to get that book. I've got to get an engineer in there. I want a producer in there with me to make sure the show is good. And I got to get in there. We can't do it this week. What I did do for her, because we produce this at a radio station with jocks that come in every day. Sometimes they'll have guests. I said, I'll pass this on to the jocks. They might want to have him in. It'd be five, 10 minutes talking about the book. It's exactly what you want at the time that you want. I don't know. There are no guarantees. As far as our interview, can't do it. It's got to be remote. It's got to be on our timeline. We get it out when we get it out. And as I've already mentioned, it's got to be this one hour. I need two hours to tape it. But the first three out of four sections is going to be you talking about the music industry. We happen to mention the book at the end. That's it. It can't be all about the book. And she's cool. She's cool. I say this to say, it wasn't weird. It's a win for her. It's a win for him. We get what we need out of it. The listeners, which is the most important part of this, I think, they get what they need out of it. It's a win, 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 win. But that does not happen if you listen to the publicist or you listen to the agent, let them control the story, the timing, whatever. And they will do that. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. This is just the type of people that publicists and agents are. They are immune to criticism. They are immune to rejection. So if you say, "Mm, kinda, they're gonna come back to you and ask you, ask you, ask you. You need to say no. You're not gonna hurt their feelings. I always joke around about the Mormon missionaries. We got these kids sometimes, they come around, always in the white shirt, the ties, bikes sometimes. I'm telling you, man. And I do the Jehovah's Witnesses the same way. Kingdom Hall pulls up in a van, 10 or 12 Jehovah's Witnesses get out, they knock on the door, knock, knock, knock. Hey, would you like a copy of the Watchtower? Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, love talking to those guys. And I don't talk to them about their religion, but I talk to them about rejection. Been trying to get them to come on the show. I think it'd be good for podcasters. This is what I'm talking about, seeing the potential in something. I think it'd be good for podcasters because they are not phased by having somebody slam the door in their face. They just go on to the next one. That's why you see a lot of Mormons. Those guys are great at sales, man. They are great. They'll knock, knock, knock on doors. They have the training from the temple, man. And they will get on that thing, go after it like an attack dog. Those guys are killer salesmen. Anyway, they know a lot about rejection. I'm seeing the parallels there. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I think as podcasters, we get into trouble because you've got a publicist, you've got an agent who really wants to get the client booked, really wants to get that client booked. And you say, "Mm, well, you know, there's a story in there. Yeah, I could do it. It's not a great match. But if you're like me and you're able to transpose stuff, 
you see it in a different way than your audience is likely to see it. That's the big problem. A lot of times your audience isn't as quick to see those parallels as you are. Say, don't talk to me about Buicks. I drive a Cadillac. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're still talking about cars here. Don't you see the parallels? No, I drive a Cadillac. And sometimes you're going to have that, no matter how great you sculpt that story. But you at least need to try. You don't need to play nice. You don't need to be a pushover. You don't need to do something that you resent. Work with people, work with publicists. That's fine. But keep in mind that it is up to you to have a great episode. It is up to you to look out after your audience. The publicist is probably not going to go back and listen to that episode. He or she does not care if it's a great episode. He or she only cares that they could chalk one up for their client. Hey, I got you booked on this show. I got you booked on that show. That's the downside of having a popular podcast. The only time that I would say for you to say yes to anything is if you've got a brand new podcast, you don't have a lot of listeners, and you are brand new to interviewing. It is a good skill to have. You will develop a lot of skills by dealing with people with different types of equipment, by dealing with people with different types of software, by dealing with people who are rushed, connecting to you remotely, connecting to you in person, you are going to develop a lot of skills. So in that case, you know, if you're starting a brand new podcast, you're maybe 10 episodes in, say yes to everything. I was working with one client, doing pretty well on social media. The podcast is up and coming. She's getting a lot of people ask her, can I be on your podcast? I said, yeah, man, you need to get good at this podcasting thing. You need to get good at working with podcasters. You need to get good at working with publicists, good at following up, good at working with guests, good at building an instant rapport good at getting the questions and the stories that your audience needs from people that might not be a good match. That's one of the great things about having guests that don't have media training. You have to work a little bit harder than somebody who has been on the mic a lot, has done a lot of talking about their topic. You know who the easiest people to interview are? Authors. Spent two, three years on a book sometimes. They know that topic in and out. So by the time they get to you, they've thought it through. They're also talking about it a lot. You're probably not the first podcast that they're going on. Those guys are easy. Celebrities are easy. The real skill set of an interviewer, how great interviews are made, how great interviewers are built, that comes from the not so great guest. So if you're trying to build those skills, in that case, I would say, say, yeah, I'll take it. You don't need to push back so much. But if you've got an established podcast, if you want to keep it established, you want to keep that listenership coming in, don't say yes to everything. Also, if you do say yes, You do do the interview and it doesn't work out so well. Don't worry about putting it out if it's not a great interview. If it's not up to your standards, don't think that you have to put it out. That's an awkward conversation. Hey, when's the interview going out? Hadn't seen the interview up. Do you have a date for it? Let me know. No, 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 no. That's another thing that you're going to find once you get established. The really established guests are doing so many interviews. They know some of them are going to come out. They know some of them are going to come out later, months later, sometimes. They know some of them will not come out. So they're not going to run you really hard. And I don't think there's anything wrong about following up on an interview. If you've done one with somebody as a guest and you're curious about when it's going to come out, maybe you need it for your reel, you want to promote it for them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not saying that you're an amateur, but I think you know what I'm talking about. With some of those guys that you do interviews with, They're just a little too enthusiastic. They're really selling, selling, selling. You know, they got to pay rent, whatever. Something to consider. I've actually got a couple of these stacked up. I will be continuing this conversation on future episodes. If you've got questions about working with publicists, if you're a publicist yourself, you say, whoa, David, I got a different opinion on this. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to dive into it with you. Maybe have you on as a guest. Our conversation can be recorded. I'll put it out as an episode. If you want to make sure you don't miss this stuff, you want to subscribe. The way to do that, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got three buttons there. Go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Pick one of them. iPhone button, Android button, RSS button. You know how this works, right? You're on an iPhone, click that one. Android, click the Android button. If you need the RSS feed, got that button for you. And if you want to scan the QR code, do this thing automatically. Get this podcast on your phone. Take me to the gym. Take me in the car. We'll talk about building a big podcast wherever you go. Scan that QR code. It's going to get you hooked up on Build a Big Podcast. The URL again, it's bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Go there right now before you forget, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. 
And I will see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.